In this video, we're going to introduce how we can calculate the deflections of a beam or any structure by a method called the double integration method. And we're going to show how very quickly how this method is derived and then go on to show examples of calculating the deflection of beams at various points. So we're going to go by way of an example. We have a beam with some loading on it here. I've got a uniformly distributed load. However, this could be any type of loading, point loads, linearly varying, distributed loads, etc. And doesn't necessarily need to be continuous across the whole beam. As a result of the loading applied though, we have, and I'm kind of considering the neutral axis of the beam, we have a deflection of that beam. And I've drawn that with a red line here. And that is the deflection from zero amount of deflection down to a certain point. And I'm labeling that up as V. And obviously the V changes as we vary with distance X going along the beam. As well as having a displacement V, we can also have a rotation of the beam as we go along the beam. So at the center, especially if we've got a UDL, we're expecting to have no rotation of theta would be equal to zero. As we go to this right hand side, we have theta, which if we measure from the X axis and go anti-clockwise, we get a positive angle theta. If we to look at the other side of the beam, so where we've pointed out here, we would have a negative angle going from the positive x axis. So as a result, we get a deflection. We can measure this deflection as V of x, but we can also measure this deflection by imagining if we have some point i'll call it o a radius of curvature and i'm going to call that radius of curvature rho and we can show and i'm not going to do it in this video from differential geometry we can relate this radius of curvature rho to the deflection v of x and i'm just going to state this now from differential geometry so from differential geometry we get that one over rho is equal to d2v by dx squared all divided by 1 plus dv by dx squared and all to the power 3 upon 2. So if our deflections v are very small, our rotation theta, which is also equal to the change in deflection with the change in distance going along the beam, so dv by dx. So if v is very small, dv by dx will be very small, and therefore dv by dx, or dv squared by d2v by dx squared, will also be very small. So this term here in the brackets is going to be very small. So we've got the all squared term. This will be small but non-negligible, this term here on the top, leaving us with just one on the numerator, on the denominator. So we therefore get, and we're just going to use this now, 1 over rho is approximately equal to d2v by dx squared. And we're just going to use this identity rather than go into the detailed derivation of where this identity comes from. 
We're now also going to recall from strength of materials that we can derive something that we call the engineer's bending equation. If you haven't come across this before, you're going to have to bear with me. But the engineer's bending equation, and we call it engineers because of the approximations we make in terms of small displacements, etc. And it's a weird equation because we have three parts to it. And I'm just going to state it and say go back to some strength materials notes if you want to know where the derivation comes from. But there are three parts to it. M over I equals sigma over Y, which equals E over rho. That's worth putting a big box around this. Even if you don't remember it now, it's one of those things that you'll remember for the rest of your life if you become an engineer after graduating. So M is the moment, I is the second moment of area, Sigma is the stress at a distance Y from the neutral axis of, of the beam. So if we had a beam cross section and this was the neutral axis, if we wanted to find out the stress right at this extreme fiber of the beam, the distance Y would be this. Then we have E, which is our Young's modulus, and Rho, which is our radius of curvature, as we've just described. So we have three parts of this equation, and we're gonna take some of this, this part, part one, and part three, to write that one, over rho is equal to m divided by e i. So 1 over rho, we have also just shown, is equal to d2v by dx squared, where v was the displacement or deflection at a point. So we're going to replace this 1 over rho, and we get d2v by dx squared is equal to m over e i. And this is an important equation that's, if you don't remember, not important, but it is something that's going to crop up over and over again. So I'm going to put a big box around that. And we can subsequently, we've got a d2v by dx squared. We can subsequently integrate that once. And that will leave us with dv by dx, which you also recall was our rotation theta, is equal to the integral over of m over e i dx. And again, this is an important formula. So we're relating the rotation of a beam at a point to the bending moment, the Young's modulus, so the material properties and I, the geometric properties, the second moment of area. And we can go again and integrate once more. And this will get us to so we integrate dv by the x gets us v is equal to the double integral of m over e i dx. And you can put dx dx if you like. So by double integrating, we can get at our deflection at a point. And it's worth pointing out as well that v could be a function of x m could be a function of x so could e so could i but we're not going to consider variations of e and i with x in this course so to recap before we move on to an example 
if we want to calculate the deflection or rotation of a point along the beam using what is quite a horrible formula for the geometry and simplifying based on having a small deflection which if you're in structural engineering is usually a good thing if you want to keep your job so we get a relationship between the radius of curvature and the deflection of the beam v and it's actually d2v by dx squared using some information from strength of materials we can relate the deflection or the rotation of the beam to the applied bending moment the material properties and the geometric properties to give us one formula relating the radius of curvature to those properties and the radius of curvature in turn we can express in terms of the deflection at a given point along the beam so that could be v of x integrating this once will get us an equation where we can get at the rotations of the beams at any point along the beam and integrating again we can find a formula that we can use to find the deflections of the beam so in the next video we're going to do an example where we use these formulas to calculate the deflections of a beam and the rotations of a beam and subsequently what the maximum deflection of a beam would be.